approximately 30 minutes on an outbound evening flight from Dublin. The lead flight attendant at the Aer Lingus cabin crew nervously made the following painful announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sorry, but it appears that there has been a terrible mix-up. Just minutes prior to takeoff by the airport catering service, I don't know what happened, but we have 103 passengers on board, and unfortunately, only 40 dinner meals were delivered to the plane. I truly apologize for the mistake and inconvenience. The passengers started to mumble, but when it died down, she continued, anyone who would be kind enough to give up their meal to somebody else can eat, will receive free alcohol for the dur duration of the flight. The next announcement came 90 minutes later. If anyone would like to change their minds, we still have 40 dinners available. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, if you're in Atlanta, I've been in Atlanta for a long time, you realize there are two very famous Catholic high schools here in Atlanta. Maris High School, founded by the Maris Fathers back in 1900, and the Maris Fathers, for 100 years, have done incredible work for the church in Georgia. And some of my best friends, my spiritual directors and advisors as priests have been Maris Fathers. And then there's St. Pius High School, where I taught at for 33 years, founded in 1958. St. Pius High School, I'm proud to say, produced a new principal for Maris High School, a Pius graduate from the class of 95, as is the head soccer coach at Maris High School, one of my students from the class of 1989. Now, Maris High School's tuition is higher because it's a prep school. Pius is lower because it's a diocesan school. At a Maris Pius game about 15 years ago, some of my students came up with the idea of putting a big banner on our side. It said this, God loves us for $5,000 less a year. <laughs> a young man grew up in the west of Ireland just with his mother. They were very close. He went off to college and got a job a couple of hours away from home. After working a few years, he met this beautiful girl and he fell in love. He called his mother and told her that he's thinking of asking her to marry him. His mother was very happy for the son. So the son, the mother, enjoyed games, and he asked if she would like to have some fun. The son proposed that he would bring his lady friend along with two of her, her other friends to meet the mom. On Saturday, and let mom guess which one he was going to marry. The mother thought that's a wonderful idea. On Saturday, he, along with the lady and two friends, went to the mother's home. All three ladies were on the sofa sipping tea. After 15 minutes, his mother turns her head towards the son and says, the one in the middle. Mom, you know me so well. How do you know it's her? She responds, it's easy. She's the only one I don't like. As part of my family is Jewish, I always get a little nervous when people come up to me with priests, rabbi, and minister stories. But I heard one the other day, it's supposedly a true story of a priest, a minister, and a rabbi who grew up in New York City together in the same neighborhood and stayed friends even if they were ordained in their ministry. And towards the end of their life, they had a lunch, and they were in their 80s then, and they sat down and they were talking. And the minister said, I wonder what people will say when they see us in the casket at our wake. I want them to say, the minister said, he was a great preacher of the word of God. He stirred us into belief and confidence in God. The priest said, I hope when they look at me in the casket at my wake and say the rosary, that they say about him, he was a holy man. He loved the church. He loved his people. He loved the nuns. He loved the school. And then the rabbi said, when I'm in my casket and they look at me, I hope they say, look, he's moving. Two 90-year-old women, Rose and Barb, had been friends their entire life. When it was clear that Rose was dying, Barb visited her every day. One day Barb said, Rose, we both loved playing tennis all our lives, and we've been playing all throughout high school. Please do me one favor. When you get to heaven, somehow you must let me know if there's tennis in heaven. Rose looked up at Barb from her deathbed and said, Barb, you've been my friend all these years. If it is possible, I'll do this favor for you. 
Shortly afterwards, Rose passed away. At midnight a few nights later, Barb was awakened by the sounds in her sound sleep by a blinding, flashing light and a voice calling to her, Barb, Barb. Who is it? asked Barb, sitting up suddenly. Who is it? Barb, it's me, Rose. Rose, you're not. You're dead. I'm telling you, it's me, Rose, insisting the voice. Rose, where are you? In heaven, replied Rose. I have some really good news for you and some bad news for you. Well, tell me the good news first, said Barb. Well, the good news is, Rose said, is that there is tennis in heaven. Better yet, all our old bodies who died before us are here too. Better ever than that, they're all young again. Better still, we're all with springtime and it never rains or snows. And the best of all, you can play tennis all you want and you never get tired. That's fantastic, Barb says. It's beyond my wildest dreams, so what's the bad news? You're playing on Tuesday.